Yeah, greetings among four, Ghana four. You know, I show for any tea for viewers and subscribers. I will greet you. If you're born the Righteous Messenger, and I would like to take this opportunity to welcome you to the Righteous Messenger YouTube channel. I'm out for a day here today. It'll be one article. I see some article for one phase book group called the Away Empire. Away Empire. And this article was, you know, written or put together by one John Zibiri. John Zibiri, you know, and this is what John Zibiri said about Ghana, you know. I'm out for this. Um, article I'm reading right now was posted on 9th May 2020, and you know, when close the door. And it represents, you know, the, the state of our country, the state of our Ghana, of our country Ghana. And I've named this video, captioned it, 2 million of the likes of Kennedy in Japan cannot change Ghana. Because it's part of the article. And this video or the article is not typically about Kennedy in Japan, you didn't understand, but it's about the state of our country as is it as it, it is now and the governorship, you know, how the ruling party is, you know, destroying the country. I'm on for that be why I won't read out this article to you because this article so much relates to what is happening to our country Ghana and what I keep hearing what I keep reading you know on the internet videos that I keep seeing a month for you know so without much ado make us start read the article a month for it's quite a long article I don't know if I will feel do all within the time where I won't make video this video last. But if I know feel do all within this video, I will do the part two. You know, but let me start reading the article. What John Zibiri said about Ghana. Yeah. And this John Zibiri said, I worked and lived in Accra for over 20 years. I ran my own private company from 2001 until 2018. Two million of the likes of Kennedy in Japan cannot change Ghana. Yeah? Everything is wrong in Ghana. This is what this John Zibiri is saying. Everything is wrong in Ghana. Obviously, someone who has experienced, you know, a different system a system way where the structures are working where the government cares or takes care of the people in the country you know when that person goes to Ghana they will look at the situation and think oh what happened here but I'm for let me continue the um, the article because I don't think I have much time so the director won't give you contract except you pay up front. In Ghana, the banks won't give you loan except you concede a certain percentage. The man supervising the contract won't pass the job except you play ball. You give him bribe. The clerk won't pass your file for payment except you rob his palm. Bribe him. The accounts department won't raise your payment voucher or check unless you see them. I can go on and on. The worst thing is that it has become a norm that nobody sees anything wrong with. This bribery and corruption they talk about, which is, you know, you know, eating into our country like a cancer. You know, 
If you try to stand in their way, you put your life at risk. Those of us, the freedom fighters, where we are against, you know, this cancerous, you know, entity, you know, eating into our country, destroying the systems in our country, you know, we talk this our child, we become targets. You know, we start fearing for our lives. Let me continue. If you get killed, there is no justice system in the place to seek redress and bring the perpetrators to book. The police is corrupt. The judiciary is the same. Even the religious circle is not spared. Everything in Ghana revolves around corruption. Nobody cares about anybody. No law and order. I looked from my left to my right. Everybody is only desperate about one thing, money. And this is because of the poverty in the country. Because look, development, lack of development, lack of jobs, you know, lack of good roads, lack of, you know, healthcare facilities. You know, as I go on, I am an electrical engineer with MNSC and Corin, C O R E N. The system don't care about my qualifications. Distribution and transmission jobs are given to allergies, pastors, friends, and relatives without any basic skills. Man, for you listen, I started asking myself. How do I convince my kids that education and hard work is rewarding? This guy is talking that is, is no, is, how do I even say it? You can't bring up kids in Ghana if you want them to be upright citizens who should work hard, go to school, you know, come out and work hard and have a life, comfortable life good quality life you can't bring up kids in ghana and accept and expect them to grow up and be good responsible citizens you know when fools at bureaus i don't know what that means let me read again when fools at bureaus and touts are running the country from local government to the presidency you see is this what my four sons will also go through? In 2018, I decided I have had enough. I decided I was leaving. I migrated to Australia with my family. Don't put yourself in harm way for any reason. The problem of Ghana is in the hands of Ghanaians living in Ghana. How do you understand? You know, try starting a gate house in your village everybody wants to profiteer from it the bricklayer the carpenter the mason and even your brother who claim to be supervising on your behalf Charlie, this what will be happening to we when we get abroad Charlie, you know if you do nothing back home Charlie, about fubu chobwa on boy and chair chale what guys you chale 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 and him fade on chale make a day my abroad then you know have my peace of mind you want to do something from back home, but child, everybody want to rob you. You go gang where you ask the price of something, here, Charlie. They, they, they go talk. It depends. It depends on what the person buying it. Anyway, I'm on for make a go on. They are corrupt, morally bankrupt, and selfish. Everybody there thinks about himself, and nobody is thinking about Ghana. Even the president, did they take bribes? I'm not going to get the video. And every time we go hit on this, Nana Akufa do take two bribes, Charlie. The one way we get for video talk, that'll be the only one way we go feel, you know, use as evidence. But Charlie, that's a good evidence. Listen. You don't have to be the one to go there to change anything. This is what this John Zibiri is saying. Let those under the hammer start the revolution. I beg you, 
Sorry, I beg, make you hear word. Charlie, with the bang on the gun about this fix the country campaign, government stop or MPP ruling, you know, party in Ghana stop fix the country campaign or demonstration. But then look at the crowd that gathered at, you know, an ex uh, 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 MPP member who passed away, his funeral. Look at the crowds that gathered there. That one, their COVID, no, they affect that gathering. But gathering way, the people want to just, you know, gather, go out and, you know, air out their grievances to the government. They were stopped in the name of COVID. But when a ruling party member died, look at the tongue, look, look at the crowd at the funeral. Come for you see the corruption they talk about. Let me continue reading. This post is gonna anger a lot of my followers. I'm still gonna post it anyway. Analogy of oppressors and foolish citizens. A case of Ghana citizens and their elected oppressors. During the Soviet dictatorship. So I'm for basically this is an analogy that this John Zibiri used to describe the citizens of Ghana. Because I've seen this analogy before. It's by, you know, you know, Stalin was in that uh, analogy and he used a chicken, yeah, to show you how, you know, gullible or stupid the people are. Listen, during the Soviet dictatorship of Joseph Stalin, he was a brutal dictator with mind of his own. On one fateful day, Stalin came to Politburo, meeting with a live chicken. Standing in front of the audience, he started to pluck the feathers of the chicken off one by one. The chicken trembled in pain, blood trickling, blood trickling out of its pores. It gave out grievous cries, but Stalin, being a cruel detector, continued without remorse, plucking the feathers until... The chicken was completely naked after which he threw the chicken on the ground the naked chicken was staggering in pain Stalin goes into his pocket and from his pocket he took out some chicken food and started to throw it at the poor and hapless creature the poor chicken in pain started eating and Stalin started walking towards his seat and as he walked away he kept dropping some food some feeds on the floor and the chicken followed him and sat feeding from his feet. Joseph Stalin then turned to his mem to members of his political party leadership. He said, this chicken represents the people. You must disempower them, brutalize them, beat them up, stab them, and then leave them. If you do this, go into your pocket and give them peanuts when you are in that helpless and desperate situation, you will blindly follow they will blindly follow you for the rest of their life, worshipping you. They will think you are a hero forever. They will forget that you are responsible for their sorrowful situation in the first place. Breathtaking, isn't it? Come on, for it's all day here. The man they talk these things. Now take a look at the people. Now take a look at all the people some Ghanaians are busy defending on social media. The, the, the talker, you know, fellow citizens will come there, they, they talk, say, they insult. Charlie, he's frustrated. He doesn't know what to do. Secondly, that's his style of presentation. If you don't like it, don't listen to him. But what he's saying is true. The citizens are suffering because they're paying for the loot and rob, or the rob and loot the country, thinking about only themselves. It's all about friends and family now in the country. And if you're not part of that, look, you are left onto your own. Look at the roads. I'm on for Ghanaians kill those who should defend and defend those who they should kill. I'm on for, you know, this thing here, you know, it'd be very, you know, brain provoking it's like you have to read this thing and think about it and look at the situation in our country pass to all your contacts and let your government know 
we know what's going on i'm out for some of the comments somebody said suleiman sananya seriously Emmanuel joe glau real talk someone to nana kwami ratifield these two political parties will help the youth and development of the country it's sad you follow them because of tribalism sad you know I'm on for is a powerful article to me and to be honest you no know, what I keep seeing what I, what I keep hearing what I keep reading that's what this is exactly what's happening in the country you know and I just come to read this article to you I'm on for please listen to it share it if you want you know like it if you want I'm on for comment on it if you want me righteous messenger Charlie I do what I will feel do I always come do these videos to relate to the people to show that look the way our country is being treated and governed is not right the people the, the, the leadership are not thinking of the people they're thinking of what they can earn for themselves Anyway, I'm out for a go end for here. If you're bored, the righteous messenger way, I can pass through again. And you know, thanks for viewing the video. I'll see you again in my next video. Peace. Bye bye. Yeah, I am a boy of Ghana. It is a castle. Oh man, you're here, my. Then I'm a memoir and quiet. You know, I come to you. Just run the messenger and the rhythm right on the can't contest. Otherwise, we fly with this guy from an ass of sick and so. Them not stuck up, watch me.